Good morning, everyone. I'm truly honored to be here today and to have represented Alpha as chair this past year. And what a year it's been. An economic downturn that I don't think any of us foresaw a year ago. Dropping occupancy levels, shrinking margins, and obviously challenging capital markets. But what I'm most proud of as I think back over this year is that neither Alpha nor our members have lost sight of that which is most important. For our members, it has been staying focused on creating the highest quality of life for the residents that they serve and continuing to innovate and enhance that which they were already doing. And for Alpha, it has been to continue to strengthen our position as the voice of assisted living. 20 years ago, Alpha was founded not to be a trade group, but to help start a movement, to bring this emerging concept of assisted living forward, to introduce a new alternative, frankly, to change the way America was aging. Many of you may recall that 20 years ago, the state of long-term care was pretty unattractive. In fact, I was often uh, said to folks, I'd put my mom in a nursing home or my grandmother, but I didn't want to be there. Choices were limited. There was a strong institutional bias. Nursing home lengths of stay were measured in years, not days. And seniors had limited influence over how, when, and where they could receive care. Ageism was rampant. Seniors were institutionalized for no reason other than their age and condescending paternalism by government, healthcare professionals, and the general population, even those in the senior living field, was having an overall negative impact on the quality of life of seniors, particularly those that were the most frail. So here we are 20 years later. Some things have changed, but there still remains much to do. I think perhaps I sound like President Obama reflecting on his first 100 days. We are making progress, but we're not satisfied. The challenges we face are significant, but it is critical to those we serve that we succeed. For the quality of life for millions of seniors and their families depends on how well we accomplish our goals in these important years ahead. 20 years after we began, the need for a strong alpha remains undiminished. Not so that members can buy cheaper insurance or so that we can enjoy a nice conference or get CEUs or make contacts in a busy exhibit hall, although all those are useful and nice benefits of a vibrant alpha. No, we need a strong and vibrant alpha to help lead a strong and innovative assisted living movement, one that will continue to foster better alternatives and a higher quality of life for millions of seniors in the years ahead. Because although we have made good progress in these past 20 years, many of the problems and challenges which the early assistant movement set out to tackle unfortunately remain stubbornly in place. Ageism is still an unfortunate truth in America and diminishes seniors' quality of life daily. The institutional bias that existed 20 years ago is still found in our state and federal long-term care policy and in the minds and patterns of our health care system. Even today, an 80-year-old woman with a broken leg will be treated very differently than a 40-year-old or a 4-year-old with the same condition. And condescending paternalism, whether practiced by a state regulator or one of our own employees, still occurs far too frequently. Having said that, there is so much that we can feel good about. Unlike when we began, assisted living is widely recognized as the preferred senior living environment. As a movement, we have changed the face of long-term care and enhanced the quality of life for millions. Alpha began with less than two dozen early pioneers who banded together to advocate for this new alternative that focus on quality of life and not just quality of care. Today, we can be proud that quality, purpose-built, assisted living, thanks to many of you in this room, is much more available in zip codes across our nation. 
The range of choices is wider, the level of customer service higher, the architecture and design better, and the training and quality of staffing stronger. And the quality of life enjoyed by those we are serving is stronger than ever. And Alpha has gotten stronger as well. Today we have thousands of members across the country. We have come off our strongest financial year ever. We are offering more services to the executives of our industry than ever before. We are recognized on Capitol Hill as the voice of assisted living, and we are at the table influencing and driving public policy. And finally, our relationships with our state affiliates and chapters are stronger than ever before. And we are going to need each and every one of these strengths to face the challenges in the years ahead. In order for the assisted living movement's full promise to emerge, we must continue to be a strong legislative force at both the federal and state level. We must be an active participant at the regulatory agency level. We need to pursue our mission using the court system when necessary, and we need to engage the public in the court of public opinion with a strong and persuasive communication program. Because Alpha began as a movement, there has always been a sense of purpose, a spirit of generosity, a sense of sharing, and a common mission that has marked us all. I am certain that at this conference, that spirit of sharing, that openness, will be demonstrated repeatedly. Whether it is each of us sharing best practices, as you will see shortly, or lessons learned, this conference will once again bring out these hallmark values which have been such an important part of this organization for the past 20 years. In closing, I just want to thank and recognize the Alpha Board of Directors and the staff of Alpha for the accomplishments of the past year. It truly has been an honor to serve with you. And I look forward to continuing to work with all of you in the year ahead to continue to champion this important movement. Thank you. It's a real pleasure.